Hello, good day and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I want to show you a view collection and give you an example of when you might want to use it. When we started um, Pocket Base, we we're looking at, well, if you create a new collection, you can certainly select from the type here. And most of our collections have been base type, as you can see with the folder icon, and there they are. We didn't have to create our user collection, which is we can see here is an odd type collection because that was given to us. The next one was view. And I mentioned that a view collection is sort of a read only collection. And so why would you want to read only collection? Well, before I do that, let's just cancel and let's go back to our documentation, which I have open here already. But if you don't have it open, you know to open it by clicking docs right here. And if we go to collection and then we look at the documentation, tell you collections represent your application data. Now we saw there were three types. The application data is just generic stuff, base, and then auth for you know authenticating users and so on. And then this view collection. So let's click on view collection. And so it says a view collection is a read-only collection type where the data is populated from a plain SQL select statement. So if you don't know SQL, then this might be a challenge for you, but SQL is not terribly difficult and you can use almost any large language model today, describe what you're trying to do and it should probably be able to help you. And anyway, it says allowing user to perform aggregation or any other custom queries in general. So for example, the following query will create a read-only collection with three post field ID name and total comments. So this is when you'd want to use a view collection, or one example when you want to use a view collection, we just sort of want to re return aggregated result, computation, that sort of thing. For me, it's another good example would be where you want to return sort of a slice of your data that you don't want to change. And to see what I mean, let's talk about the data that we have. Imagine that we get a new set of requirements and it says, well, we want users who are accessing the front end to, if they go through the cards collection, they should only see the cards that haven't been fulfilled. Basically where the order field is equals to false. They should not see the cards where it's already fulfilled or ordered. Now they can easily do this by passing a filter expression. We want to make sure that though it's easy for a front end to use it. And maybe what we want to be able to do is add the feature to say, well, people can have multiple cards that are on fulfill and that's because we're going to have like a card type and card name so then you can create like registry cards that you can share with other users or you can create cards that you name like back to school christmas birthday holiday whatever and you can just sort of accumulate things in those different cards and then when you're ready then you can submit them so it allows you to have multiple cards so we, that's what we want the cards collection endpoint api associated with it to be able to do but then we still want users to be able to say, hey, I know it's all at a shopping cart from last year. I want to go back, see that, and maybe copy it or create a new shopping cart based off of the items in that shopping cart or select the items and then create a new shopping cart, something like that, right? So we still want users to be able to go find the list of their old or previous shopping carts. And so we want a different API endpoint for that. Why? Because those old shopping carts, the ones that have been submitted, they shouldn't change. So this should definitely be a read-only view of the same data, but we don't want anyone to be able to make any changes like toggle it from ordered to unordered, right? So it makes sense that oh, we should separate the APIs um, in that way. So how might we do this? Well, let's go look at the our current um, API rules for our cards collection. And we can see that what it does is allow only users who own this shopping, this cart, to be able to see it and that's good but what we really want to do is restrict it further by saying that not only user who owns this um, card should see it but we want to add the condition that the ordered field should also be equals to false this endpoint only return open cards essentially well what about our view now so let's create our view so we say new collection so let's now create our view collection which we're going to call carts underscore view and we wanted to have essentially all the same fields so id user you know ordered created updated all the same fields except we want to make sure we 
only return cards where the order field is equals to true. All right, so we say new and we go call it, still have to give it a name, carts underscore view. And I'm kind of I'm appending underscore view to just really call out that it's just a view. And this is not a base collection, it's a view collection, read only data. And notice you can see things change already. This says we have to use a select statement and our API rules only allow listing and viewing because this is read only. So it doesn't make sense to have update, create or delete. And so we still want to limit this to you know users who own this cart so at request and id so that's the authenticated user request id and you may be thinking well why don't we just use the id from the request in the query that is not allowed and the reason why it's not allowed is because that would be dynamic information coming in that you would be trying to run against the database and you can have SQL injection and all those security concern. So for that reason, the view collection is meant to be static. Now you can do further filtering by using the um, API rules or even you know some of the filtering um, expression that we've seen before, but it will only be used to limit already um, the data that would have been returned by this query anyway, but it's not going to take into consideration any dynamic data from the request, at least not in the SQL statement. So let's um, write our SQL statement. So we want select, we want ID, we want user field also, we want discount, we want the, okay, let's do, I would do it from, we want carts, right? So let's do that for now. And we want payment method, created, updated, okay? Let's say, and then let's just leave this like this for now and now let's do create and you can see for this view it shows you us all the records and if we go to cart oh we have order oh, so we didn't include our order field so yeah we could go back and add order field so let's do order but notice when we save um, the result here we still see all the same records that we would see for cart all three records so we need to filter this to ex to include only when order is equals to true. So we can easily do that by going back to our SQL statement. And what we'll do is we'll say where order equals true. And now when we save changes, we see it out only one order that's equals to true for the, the John Doe user. Okay, so now that we have this set, let's go exercise it and test it, make sure it's working correctly. So if we go over here and we look at our environmental variable, we see it out we have, you know, some variables for you know the user to log in or two users and also our admin user and the reason why i have admin is because i want to show you something just to remind you that the admin is different than regular users so i don't want you to be surprised so i'll skip over schema and let's just try force with listing the cart as an unauthenticated user basically an anonymous user who might try to find our endpoint or know about it and try to get a list of Cart. And of course, it should be empty. And same thing, whether it go to, they, even if they go to our cards view, authentic, unauthenticated users should not be able to see anything. And let's go to user one here. And so we're going to log in, save the token. So we've done all of this before. And now I'm going to do as an authenticated user, I will then try and access the shopping carts for this user and send it. And we can see one shopping cart come back and it is for this user and if we try to see which shopping carts they have closed already or submitted they don't have any which is again is very true and same thing i'm going to log in as this user i'm going to then send a request and one cart that is unfulfilled notice different user id and request the carts that are open and we can see that oh, because we returned the ordered field we can verify that we are getting the correct results. And so this works just fine. And that's a good example of how we can sort of make things easier for a front end by diff providing two different use cases or two different views on top of the same data. So there's one problem though. Now imagine that someone, you know, read a shopping cart that has his order field set to true. Using this ID, they can then use the cards collection to say, I want to flip it to false, right? Because there's nothing that stop it. So it seemed that what we should do is for this cards API rule, 
when it comes to updating a record. We should not allow any updates on cards that are already set to true. So let's go back and say for a cards collection, let's go to our API rules and we'll say when it comes to update, well, you can only update the record you own, that's true, and if ordered um, is equals to false. And then right now we have delete only for admin, so that's fine. So that should take care of that case. All right, so finally, let's talk about our admin. So we're going to log in as an admin user. Notice the different endpoints to log in as an admin user, but the result is the same. We get a token. We're going to try and request all shopping cart. And so we do this. Now, because as an admin user, the API rules are looking for the authenticated user ID and testing it against the user. But for an admin, it's not doing it. So that's why we're going to get back all the records anyway. So keep in mind that for our admin, you always going to be able to do things that the user doesn't do, especially in things like, like this, where we have filter, um, API rules for the user. And what about if we request views? Well, the admin cannot get any more records than the view because remember it's an SQL statement. Now, if we had multiple users who have, um, you know, shopping cards that are submitted, we'll get those too. So just wanted to start to show you that to make sure to you understand the effect of being the admin user. If you're still watching this video and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I mean, you watch the end of the video. Do you like the material? If you do, why not subscribe? We'd love to have you. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for returning and being patient. I'd like to say thank to Mikhail for being a Patreon supporter. If you also would like to support the channel, there are a few ways in which you can do it. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. Bye.